story of a glass bottle begins with a profile mold. This is where they are now being made. Here we see a design being engraved, but as it is on the mold, it has to be in reverse. show the consummate skill with which these designs are engraved. The skill of artists in an age-old craft. Each design has its own individuality. The liquid capacity of a bottle is a matter for strict accuracy. This is achieved by careful testing of the mould. A given amount of water is weighed, then poured into the mould. And the amount left over is weighed and then subtracted. Here, the incoming high tension, the outgoing low tension to the factory. These are transformers changing from high to low tension. Rectifier bulbs, which rectify the current from AC to DC. This is necessary to supply the older part of the plant. of the glass itself. The white glass mixture goes in here and by a skip hoist with a one ton capacity which supplies 120 tons a day, the skip hoist empties into the main hopper. a day. On the base of the Jubilee Hopper is a screw type automatic belt. Note the gas ports, three on each side. They supply the flame of the, to the furnace which produce a gas and air which is produced on the premises. The temperature at this stage is 1,450 degrees centigrade. This silica arch is heavily insulated to avoid fuel wastage. The glass flows from the melting section of the furnace to the cooling section, distributing itself into the four hearts with a temperature reduced and controlled to within plus or minus 5 degrees centigrade. Here is a view of the row of burners controlling the temperature. The feeder mechanism, which you will note is under constant supervision. This forces the glass down into the shear mechanism. These are the cutting shears which control the weight. There is a plunger through which the feeder pushes out a controlled amount of molten glass which is sheared off at the right moment to get the specified weight required for the bottle. The shears are kept cool by an oil spray. The temperature is now reduced to the 
region of 1,100 degrees centigrade. Molten glass now drops into the blank mold on the first table, which has six blank molds at the charging stage. The neck ring is formed and filled with compressed air. The bottle is initially conceived upside down. The molds are now reversed with the bottle the right side up. Some air is admitted prior to the turnover to start forming the bottle. The blank mold opens up and the glass is transferred to the finishing mold while still being suspended by the neck ring. Then the neck ring opens and allows the bottle to be transferred to continue its journey to the second turntable for the final blowing stage. It is then taken off the second mold and placed on the conveyor by take out fingers. There are six different bottles being made at the same time.
checks the furnace temperature with an optical pyrometer, ensuring that the recording apparatus is working efficiently. The laboratory department analyzes all incoming raw materials, the most important being a very frequent check on the moisture content of the sand. In the laboratory, the capacity of the finished bottles is checked every eight hours in this manner from each machine. The method of checking the completed bottle is the opposite of the one used for checking blank molds. Depth is now measured between the tolerances allowed. This is a modern method of controlling the quality of the glass. Previously, this was a process which took several days. The improved method consists of accurate measurements of glass density to 2.0001. Diffusions in mode efficiencies and raw material analysis affect the density of the glass, which can be detected here and corrections applied. Small samples of the glass taken daily are floated in heavy liquids, and by comparing the flotation with known samples, density differences can be detected. By very slowly raising the temperatures of these liquids, the glass sample ultimately sinks, and differences are known between the standard piece and the daily sample. Thin sections are cut from the center of each bottle daily and examined through polarized light to magnification 50. This gives an indication of melting efficiency. Here are two examples of different type of types of bottles made in the factory, milk bottles and mineral water bottles. The feeder for furnace in shop 2 producing green glass. It works on exactly the same principle as the white glass. These bottles are now lifted from the conveyor belt to the layer. They then run along on their conveyor belt and are pushed a dozen at a time. glass ready for fusion. This silk 
screen stenciling machine handles up to 60 gross a day. The bottles are stenciled and laid on the conveyor belt, which goes through a low temperature dryer. They are then removed from this belt and left to await the firing or fusing process. The bottles are now placed on the conveyor belt of the decorating layer, which brings the bottle up to the melting temperature of the paint and gradually cools off. The lettering in this process is molded into the bottle and will not rub or scratch off. This process takes four and a half hours from start to completion. designs used for milk bottles. Some of our products are exported directly abroad such as this consignment of milk bottles for a firm in Malta. This is how the stacking used to take place. This method is now mechanized which enables us to get more speed and reduces the labor required by using a forklifting truck. There is a constant flow of traffic going through this entrance. Vehicles arriving are bringing back empties. onto the motor transport for dispatch throughout the United Kingdom. This steel construction marks the commencement of the erection of new offices for the Aloha Glassworks after 200 years of constant production. The loaded vehicle now leaves on its journey. These vehicles are carefully packed, tied and covered to ensure that the goods arrive factory fresh at their destination.